Now I'm sure most workshops have got one of these or something very similar. If not, I'll do walk to one of the many other and varied manufacturers of these uh, rather wonderful tools. And let's face it, they are bloody, bloody useful bits of kit. Now, I haven't got many uh, cordless power tools. I've got this DeWalt drill and I've got a DeWalt vacuum cleaner, portable one. And they both happen to use the same type of batteries. Now, this cost me eight pounds. That's right, eight UK pounds on eBay six years ago. Now, when I bought this, this was already probably a 20 year old DeWalt drill bit. I, I, I have no idea what model is. As you can see, the sticker is missing off of this side and it was when I got it. It was beaten up, it was filthy dirty. You could barely see any of the yellow of the case. And uh, the guy who sold it to me said, you know, that it didn't work. The trigger was locked up solid, but the motor did turn and the chuck worked. So I thought, well, nothing invented, nothing gained. Didn't come with a battery. And of course, these being that old, the, the original batteries, although this is the case of an original battery, it isn't an original battery. They were NICADs, so they weren't very good anyway. So I thought, ah, eight pounds, I'll take a punt on that. <clears throat> so I bought the thing, it turned up, it was absolutely filthy. I took it apart, cleaned it up. The reason the trigger was blocked solid was it was literally crammed full of crud and dust and I blew it all out cleaned it all out as best I could and got the trigger working and lo and behold when I got a battery for it it, it worked it worked absolutely fine and it's been working fine ever since and I, I I don't use it a lot but occasionally I find these things brilliantly useful when you've got to take something apart that's got a lot of screws in it <laughs> or put something together that's got a lot of screws in it these things just save you endless amount of aggravation the only thing really wrong with it was the return spring and the trigger was broken. I don't know what happened to it, but it had literally broken into multiple pieces. And I couldn't see any way at the time of disassembling the trigger to get the spring out without breaking the trigger completely. Now, as anyone who's worked on DeWalt kit knows, they're modular, so you can buy a completely new trigger for it. But that was gonna cost me like four times what I paid for the drill. So I thought, no. So what I did was, I'll, well, you probably see it, but I'll, I'll close in a little bit so you can uh, have a close up look. There we go. Yeah, I basically just drilled a very small hole in the top of the plastic part of the trigger, drilled in, drilled in a bent piece of wire. So now this is a push-pull trigger. It, Took a little bit of getting used to when you're using it, but but once you do it, it's absolutely fine, you know. Um, and this was a nicely specced, uh, nicely spec drill. This one. Um, let's come back out again. As I said, I'd have no idea what model it is. It, it it's it's got to be well. I said probably 26, 27, maybe getting on for 30 years old now. It's got 17 torque <coughs> settings, normal drill setting, and hammer action. It's, it's a standard DeWalt dual speed reversible and it's even got a little light in the front there above the trigger which is quite nice and quite useful. So yeah, uh, brilliant bit of kit. As I said at the time, these things used NICAD batteries which were borderline freaking useless. So basically I bought a completely dead battery which is what this one is. I paid about four pounds for it, I think, plus shipping. And then I gutted it, took all the NICADs out, put a couple of LiPo cells in it, which is why it's got LiPo written all over it. And on the bottom, it's got do not use DeWalt <laughs> charger. And that works, that works absolutely fine. It's not 18 volts. I think it's about 15 when it's fully charged, but that's more than enough to work the drill. And because they're LiPos, they weigh about half as much as the NICADs and they produce oodles of current so that it, this thing will run on, on one charge on this battery. It just lasts forever, basically. So yeah, <clears throat> it's still very beaten up, but it works fine. And it's, I've had no problems with it whatsoever in, in, in the six years that I've had it. But just recently I was uh, working on a, taking apart an old uh, two drawer desk cabinet. And it had, for some reason it had multiple different screws in it. Some were posi drive, some were Allen headed, uh, cap head Allen screws, some were cheese head screws. So I was just thinking, well, it'd be really nice to have another one of these so that I could have a posi drive bit in one and a, maybe a flat head or a, an Allen wrench in, in the other one. So I thought, I wonder whether you can still get these beaten up old drills on, on eBay and you know whether they're still available. Well, apparently they are. 
<laughs> and there's oodles of them on, on eBay. There literally is loads of them. So I had a look and I found pretty much the shittiest, dirtiest, most beaten up one I could find. And again, it was listed as spares or repair. This one we've actually been able to identify. This is a DeWalt DW997. So that's probably from the from what I could find out on eBay, that's probably about 20 years old. The guy said it was spares or repairs, it was untested, and that normally means it doesn't work. Very similar spec to the other DeWalt that I've got. Uh, it's uh, dual speed, uh, reversible, and it's got I think it's got 14 torque settings, whereas the other one had 17. And it's hammer action, so, you know. If anything, underneath all the crap, uh, it's in better condition than my other one. Certainly the adjuster ring is, and the, the outside of the chuck, and the chuck works fine. So, and the other bonus is, it uses the same style of battery that I've already got. So, that's very, very useful. So, does it work? Well, believe it or not, yes it does. Both directions, yeah, it works fine. So <clears throat> basically, <laughs> I think all it needs is a clean up. So, you know, oh, and by the way, this one was a lot more expensive. I paid eight pounds for the first one I bought. This one cost me 11 pounds, which, you know, obviously that's probably inflation over the six years between the buying of the two. But um, we're gonna take it apart and have a look inside. I, I need to take it apart because I want to clean up the, the, obviously the casing. Um, so we'll, we'll take it apart and have a look and see what it's like inside. Yeah, so you'll, uh, interestingly, the uh, screws on this one, which is newer, are Phillips Posi Drive, whereas the screws on this one, which is older, are Torx. So I don't know whether that was a cost cutting method or, or, or what. And although I did say this worked, <laughs> I didn't really, I wasn't really paying uh, too much attention. And I did have noticed that when I switch the speeds uh the the speed selector switch is not is not doing anything so it just basically runs at the same speed no matter what uh what's what position that switch is in so i probably find that the switch is just broken certainly there are parts of it broken that you can see from from the top um yeah it's got it's got it's got bits missing there and and there so it's probably not actually it doesn't feel like it's do it actually switching anything so we'll have a look at that when we get to get the thing apart as far as i know that you, you don't have to take the uh, chuck off to do this you can just take the uh, take the screws out and it should it should actually come apart i think oh yeah the grip's got to come off hasn't it yeah i forgot about that let me get onto the grip yeah so so basically the the grip's got these little clips on it and if you're gentle with it, you can prise it and it'll just pull off. So, hopefully now, yes, there we go. So, well, the inside's not too bad at all. Quite, quite clean. Motor looks clean. I mean, you know, obviously when you first open these up, you expect possibly this thing to be completely clogged full of crap, but this has not had <clears throat> anything like the, when I took this one apart, it was caked, all of this, every single gap you could see, absolutely caked in sawdust and other crap. This is immaculately clean, <laughs> relatively speaking. So yeah, it's in very, very good condition. So yeah, that's not doing anything at all. So we need to investigate the, what's happening with the switch because that really isn't isn't doing anything so let's take take the rest of it apart so this should come out now um, yeah there we go so it's the trigger as i said one of the things i do like about the dewalt i haven't taken any of the others apart so i can't comment but on the others, but again, this is nice and clean, is that they do come apart really easy. And obviously this is what we want to clean. You know, we want to get it looking like that. So, right, so <clears throat> let's have a look. Put that in there. Yeah, that needs to be investigated, I think. Yeah, this is split completely. I might, I might see how much, because I know you can give out spares for, for these, for these dewalters. I might see how much, uh, you know, 
uh, spare is. So, but uh, yes, yes, it uh, doesn't look too bad at all. Right, let's get on to the cleaning. Now, <coughs> you have to be a little bit careful what you're going to use to clean this these plastic pit parts with, because obviously some things like acetone will almost certainly damage the plastic. <coughs> but um, I've seen videos and people swearing by this stuff, certainly in the States. This is a citrus-based degreaser, um, and I've actually seen it being used on DeWarp kit, and uh, you know they make it look to be truly amazing. So we're going to have a go with this and see what happens. Okay, let's give it, give it a go. Well, it's probably got to be the most silent aerosol I've ever come across. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's see whether it's any good. Well, <clears throat> yes, it definitely took some of the grease off. I think I'll give it a go, go over it again. But um, yeah, it's not exactly brought it back up looking brand new, is it? <laughs> I'll, I'll work on it some more and bring it back. Okay, <clears throat> so it would appear the trick with the degreaser is to throw a bit of scotch bright into the action. And uh, yeah, that's come up pretty well. I mean, obviously it's not looking like new, but it's a hell of a lot better than uh, <clears throat> its little partner here, which is still covered in crud. So I'm going to get on and do this one now. Well, <clears throat> while I don't think this stuff is the miracle <laughs> miracle stuff that they claim it to be, it's not bad. It smells nice too, actually. Um, yeah, these these have come up quite well. You know, I mean, they're not perfect, and no one can ever claim it's going to look like new. But it's a hell of a lot better than they were when it when 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 it turned up. So, yeah, that'll that'll do for me for now. I might give it a, another quick wipe, a wipe over before I put it back together. I've glued the switch back together with CA glue. I don't know whether that's going to be strong enough to hold it. There was quite a lot of plastic in there to, to uh, surface wise for the glue to take to. So it seems to have taken all right. Whether it's going to be strong enough, I don't know. We'll see. So uh, <clears throat> let's get it back together. It just sits there like that. Make sure the brushes are in place, which they are. <clears throat> this is the, the fiddly bit. The reversing lever and the trigger. There we go. Come on. Right. 
Right, so that goes in there like that. That's got to go in there and that's got to engage in the slot. Which is there. Yeah. That's all right, that's all where it's supposed to be. Uh, I forgot the bloody switch, which is great. Of course I did. There we go. <clears throat> Just pop that on there like that. There we go. Put the screws in and we'll be ready to go. Well, here it is in all its glory. It's certainly looking a hell of a lot better. And uh, I, wouldn't, I don't mind using it without gloves on now. I think the speed switch is working. Let's have a look. Now, nah, it would appear that the speed switch is still not working. Same speed in both situations. But that doesn't matter. I can live with that. For 11 pounds, I'm more than happy with that. I need to get some more Duff batteries and I've only got two of these at the moment. I could really do with the third. So uh, yeah, but I mean, I think that's pretty damn good value for money. 11 quid off eBay and all it needed really was a bit of cleaning up. Okay, we've got the problem with the speed switch, but I might see if I can get a replacement switch, a uh, slider switch, although I doubt it. I mean, these, this is very old now. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you what I do when I get one of these. And uh, as I said, you don't need to pay hundreds of pounds for one. You can uh, get a perfectly serviceable one off eBay for next to nothing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.